Mina, konbanwa, Jesus Freaking Gamer here. Apologies for not getting out stuff on Sunday like I should have and not doing a 30 minute message for Sunday. I did do three 30 minute messages back to back. In my mind, that's still not an excuse for not doing one Sunday. So, one more time, as I'm sure there will be several more in the future, I apologize. I will get that 30 minute message out. I think tomorrow, no guarantees, just you know, because of life, who exactly knows, but I think tomorrow it can come out. And if not, it will come out at some point later on this week. So for right now, I'm going to stick in Psalm 8 because there's more to be said and seen and done. Psalms are a wealth, and so are the Proverbs, of just spiritual knowledge and wisdom and inspiration. Uh, it's so easy for me to see as I'm just looking through the Psalms and Proverbs, like there is so much that can be said from these two books. And I'm not in the Proverbs yet. I've been through them before, and they're good. And it's just, I'm just looking at the Psalms, and I'm just like, there's so much. So... Psalm 8, verses 3 and 4. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have ordained, what is man that you are mindful of him, and the son of man that you visit him? You might have heard at least verse 4 in the past before. What is man that you are mindful of him, and the son of man that you visit him? That might have been quoted at some point before by a preacher you heard or some other Christian that you heard. That's a I'll say in the verse below, it's fairly popular. Not going to go into that. My focus is more or less on the expanse of the heavens and how great they are. We don't know how much they knew about the heavens back in David's day. We have no idea. And this, I'll say in Psalm 8, is a Psalm of David. We have no idea how much or how little they knew. If someone does know, feel free to leave it in the comments down below. But I'm pretty confident in saying they didn't know as much about space as we know nowadays. Um, we know a whole heck of a lot more than they knew back then. And while David was in awe of the fact that God, you know, paid attention to us, was mindful of us, and that he visited us with what he saw in the heavens, how much more awestruck should we be nowadays seeing the heavens as, and knowing what they are, knowing what's in them, to the extent that we do? And still knowing it, God's real. God's there. He made it all. The, the vastness, the practical infinity of space. And he is still mindful of us. He still visit, visits us. He knew it was there all along. We're the ones that are learning about his creation as this world and as human history continues to exist. And we're just continually blown away by how big God is. In light of how big his creation is. Because if creation is this big... We just I, I, we can't measure infinity. Talked about that in the whole God's omnipotence video. And while we can't really measure infinite, we can look at the creation that he ha that he has made for us and that he has put us in. And the more we look, it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And God is still there for us. He's still mindful of us. And it is mind blowing. It's mind blowing when you look at the grandeur of space and how big everything is and how, quite frankly, beautiful everything is. The fact that the God who made all of that cares about us, pays attention to us, even takes the time to visit us, chat with us, yeah. it's, it's overwhelming. It's so cool. God is so awesome. And I just, want to, I just want to shine a light on that. Like, however true it was back then for David, it's just as true nowadays, but in our eyes, since we know so much more about space, that truth should be magnified so many times more than anything they could have possibly known back then. Guys, thank you very much for watching this video. I love you, and God bless.